Hey, what's up ladies and gentle tubers? My name is Tyler, welcome to the Everide channel where today we're doing something completely different from what we normally do, which is motorcycles. We're taking a little break to talk about drones and specifically a bit of a warning and I'm not, I'm not trying to bash DJI. I have absolutely loved my Mavic Pro for years. I've flown this thing hundreds of times, have, I have hundreds of hours of footage with it. Um, it's just, it's been a fantastic drone, but I'm sending this one back. This is the Mavic Air 2 and it's just not what I thought it would be. So I'm really disappointed. A lot of the reviews have come out and said this thing is just over the top good and everything about it's amazing. And hopefully you haven't pulled the trigger on one yet because it does have uh, a good little list of problems that in my situation make it pretty well broken and unusable. So. What is my situation? Well, my job is to film adventure motorcyclists and dirt bikers out here in Southwest Utah. I bring them here, I feed them, I, I give them shelter. We, I, it sounds like a homeless shelter. <laughs> no, no I, I bring people out, uh, I feed them, I let them stay here at my home. We go out and ride motorcycles on the most amazing trails and uh, I film the whole thing. And so that's been my job for three years. And before that, I was just doing YouTube full time and I'm still doing YouTube full time. But basically I've put a lot of hours on these drones. So that's kind of where we're coming from here. I'm not a drone expert. I'm not a drone professional, uh, but I do fly drones professionally, if that makes sense. The way I use drones is mostly in sport mode. And so that means obstacle avoidance is off. I don't trust uh, and never have trusted follow me modes. I think the shots uh, don't work out so well. So I like to fly manually in sport mode, obstacle avoidance off, and that's how I tend to get the best shots. So this isn't meant to be a DJI bash video. Again, I've loved the Mavic with a few exceptions. So normally I would tell you in a quick review like this, uh, a lot of the good things, but you can watch any other review and their tales of the HDR being really fantastic or accurate. Uh, they'll tell you that the battery life is awesome. They'll tell you all kinds of really good stuff. And I think that's probably because the drone was given to them or they, they were paid. Uh, you gotta watch out for guys who get the stuff early. Um, because they, they've had it sent to them. And so they're obviously not going to say anything negative. I'm going to tell you exactly my experience. Uh, none of it's subjective. This is objective. These are facts that happened while flying. And so these are things that you can count on. And here's the thing, maybe the firmware will be updated. And so maybe it will get better in the future, but there's some things that I don't know if firmware can fix uh, that basically make the camera the gimbal, the drone, uh, just broken for a person in my situation. First and foremost, DJI reports uh, flight time in the mid 30 minutes, which is unbelievably good. My experience, however, has given me return to homes on average at 17 minutes. And so that's about half of what DJI has said. Uh, maybe your flight times will be better. I'm usually flying in sport mode. Uh, however, the winds haven't been too bad and yeah, 17 minutes is about what I'm getting. One of the big reasons why I bought this drone was 4K at 60 frames per second. However, it's shot in H.265. And what that means is that if you don't have the processing power on your computer or if you have the wrong rig or something like that, the footage is going to be very choppy, almost unusable because that's the only format that will work with 4K at 60 frames per second on this camera. If you're gonna be doing work for clients, if you're gonna be doing work for yourself, you need to make sure that your editing rig or your client's editing rigs or even just their computers or TVs that they're watching this footage on is going to work with H.265. If your editing rig is like mine, where it's very powerful, but for some reason it just doesn't work with H.265, you're out of luck. So 4K, 60 frames per second, a big selling point for me, doesn't even work for me. So that's a huge bummer. Another reason why I'm kind of bummed about the Mavic Air 2 is the size. The difference between this and the original Mavic Pro, it's really not that impressive. They're about the same height, they're about the same width, and uh, the Mavic Air 2 is just a hair shorter. This is tricky for me because I've got to carry on my back and on my body all of my water, all of my tools, spare parts, all of my camera gear, just all kinds of stuff. There's a lot of weight on my body. And so having something small and lightweight is a big deal to me and probably a big deal to you if you're an adventure videographer or photographer. Now, here's the thing is the sizes weren't that different. This is where they kind of get you here. 
I really do like this remote. It's really cool, even though it doesn't have the telemetry. I do like that it has the switch for tripod, normal, and sport mode. That's very, very convenient. And it is just better to hold than this one. However, it is a lot bigger and quite a bit heavier than this one. So um, when it comes to those things, oh, it's gonna fall. Not a big deal. I wanted to show you the batteries anyway. When it comes to the batteries, uh, this one looks a lot smaller, but then it's a lot taller actually, um, and they're about the same height. Weight-wise, they're just about identical. So really, the space savings for somebody who's very, very space and weight conscious like myself, the weight savings, the size savings, is pretty much negligible from the Mavic Pro to the Mavic Air 2. Um, so that's another big, you know, not a con, I guess, because this is smaller, but in the end, the savings is not really worth upgrading over this. One of the biggest complaints that I have about the Mavic Air 2 is when it's in sport mode and you're flying quite aggressively, uh, this gimbal will actually flop downward and it will continue to do that. Even if you level out, that gimbal will continue to flop downward and make your footage in sport mode pretty much unusable if you like to have the horizon or the sky in your footage. So that's a big, huge con for me. That footage is basically unusable. I can't give that to clients. I can't use that in my videos. That means sport mode, which I primarily fly in, is totally broken on this drone. Another inexcusable flaw of this drone, which will probably get solved in future app versions or future firmware versions, is whether the drone is 10 feet from me or a mile from me, the screen will just go completely blank for a few seconds, and then the app will restart and I'll have to reconnect the drone. Now, if this were just flying up in the sky somewhere, that's really not a big deal. However, when you're flying low, close to motorcycles, out in the desert where it's safe, in sport mode without that obstacle avoidance, having your screen just go completely blank, it's kind of a recipe for disaster, so a huge fatal flaw with the Mavic Air 2 and totally unexcusable. I won't fly a drone that's just gonna blank out every now and again. This is happening two to three times per flight. As I said, flights only last about 17 minutes, so every five, six minutes, this thing is just dead. It's, it's not cool. <laughs> Now, something that I was really excited about was the new OcuSync and the increased range that that would offer. And, you know, I've flown this thing many, many times, hundreds of times, and I can tell exactly where I start, how far this is going to go, when it's going to start to lose signal, so I can tell my riders, hey, go to this point, stop, turn around, come back to me. That way I can maximize battery life and footage and how much camera time they're getting and everything like that. Now, I know exactly how far this will fly. This won't fly any farther than this in those scenarios. Out in the desert where there's not any RF interference, there's not a lot of cell interference, there's not houses or people or anything out there, it's just a drone out in nature, the range is about the same on both of these drones. Now where the failing is, is I'll actually lose signal to my RC a lot more often in that amount of range on the Mavic Air 2. So that's a big, huge strike as well. One thing that's always bothered me about all DJI drones is on the software, you'll be flying along, again, in sport mode, no obstacle avoidance, fairly low to the ground, trying to get those good action shots. And all of a sudden, that return to home screen will pop up, get in your way, you have to take your thumbs off the sticks, press the button to cancel the return home or let it return home. And it's just kind of, it just kind of really disrupts the flight experience. DJI, I wish they would put uh, like a little watermark in the side, kind of like when there's a high wind warning, that would be much more preferable to completely boxing out the front part of the screen, especially when you're flying in kind of like riskier situations. So DJI, please stop doing that. It is so annoying. If you get the fly more combo, it's actually really cool. I do like this charger. Uh, you can charge three batteries, but not all at once. So don't let that fool you. It will charge one, then two, then three, not all at the same time. Uh, however, that is better than going in and having to switch out batteries on a single charger and set a timer and all that stuff. So this is convenient, but don't be fooled into thinking it's gonna charge all of your batteries at once. Now the final thing, and one of the reasons why this DJI Mavic Pro might actually be my last DJI drone, has been the absolutely abysmal customer service trying to get this thing returned. I've sent four different emails, four emails, not one response to any of them. I've connected on chat twice, 
they tell me to send an email. I say, nobody's responding to my emails. My return window's closing. They say, you need to contact support so they can help you fix the drone. I say, I don't want the drone. There's too many problems. I just need to send it back. And then they say, okay, we're gonna give you an RMA number and instructions on how to return it. That was four days ago now. I'm out of my return window and I'm positive that if I contact them again, they'll say, sorry, your return window's up. Working with DJI to try to get anything resolved and trying to return this drone or get any kind of support whatsoever has been absolutely a nightmare. So all in all, if you've got a Mavic Pro or any other Mavic for that matter, I really wouldn't upgrade to the DJI Mavic Air 2. It's just not all it's cracked up to be. There's many reasons why on paper it looks great, but in reality, it's a total dud. So guys, I'm just telling you the honest truth, the honest facts from somebody who does use a drone like this to make their living. And when a drone like this fails so often, it's just a huge disappointment. So my go-to will still be the tried, tested, replace the propellers, replace the gimbal a couple of times, crash it into whatever, DJI Mavic Pro. I've loved this drone and I guess I'll continue to love it because what they're coming out with now just doesn't doesn't top it in my opinion. So you guys, thank you so much for watching. If you like motorcycle videos or drone photography, maybe you'd like to subscribe to the channel. Uh, maybe not. Either way, much love, ever ride out.